evening, everyone. Welcome to Career Life Assembly Online Service. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and I hope you will have a great time uh, worshipping and enjoying the sermon with us. Before we start, let's commit this time to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. Thank you, God, for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us, Lord Jesus, to worship your name together. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, as we sing your praises, Lord Jesus, that you will be glorified, Lord Jesus, on high. Thank you, Lord. I surrender everything to your lovely hands, Lord. Before we start, I'll just uh, read Isaiah 6. It says, And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and the earth is full of His glory.
before you, Lord, to bring you praise, Lord Jesus, all the days of our lives, Lord. To bring you praise and glory, Lord Jesus, and honor. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we are here, Lord Jesus, right now, we, even though, Lord Jesus, we are at home, God, but we know, Lord Jesus, there's a victory coming, Lord Jesus, very near, Lord Jesus, because you are the God of yes and amen, Lord Jesus. You are the God who answers our prayers, Lord Jesus. You are the God who gives us, Lord Jesus, the victory because you are victory yourself, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we just come into your presence, Lord. And we claim, Lord Jesus, this victory, Lord Jesus, upon our situation, upon our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we want to see this victory, Lord. And we know, Lord Jesus, this victory, Lord Jesus, will come to pass, God.
it, Lord Jesus. We will see a victory, Lord Jesus, in our life, in our situation, Lord Jesus, because, Lord, you are, nothing is impossible, Lord Jesus, with you. Thank you, Lord, we believe, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, we surrender this time, Lord Jesus, of uh, worship, Lord Jesus, to you. And I know, Lord Jesus, we will be blessed, Lord Jesus, by this worship and also the word, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. We surrender everything to the Lord In Jesus' name. Thank you, church, for joining us in this time of worship. Now I'll pass the time to Pastor for the Word of God. Thank you. Good morning, church. Welcome home. Welcome back to church. And this morning, it's a joy to see you online again. Today, I want to share with you a message entitled, Small Yet Mighty. Small Yet Mighty. And uh, it basically talks about us. Sometimes we look at ourselves, we are so small, so insignificant, so incapable. But yet, you know what? God has made you and I for mighty works. God has made you and I for great things and big things in life. Amen? Amen? All right, I want to share today, small yet mighty. Ephesians 2, verses 4 to 10 says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works so that no man can boast, but we are God's handy work, created in Christ Jesus to do good, good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we look to your word, and we ask of you today to speak to us. Help us to understand, know your word, and grow in your word so that our life may be impacted with strength and might. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen? You know, the Bible talks about church. The, uh, uh, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. In chapter 2, he talks about because of God's great love, He saved us, He made us alive in Him. By the grace of God, we are saved. But at the same time, we are put in a position with Christ, in standing position with Him. And we were supposed, we are supposed to see him in the heavenly realm. And in time to come, you know, when he come back for us, we will be taken up to eternity and we will rule with him one day in the heavenlies. But the Bible says salvation is a gift from God. No man can work to earn the salvation. So that's why we cannot boast. And verse 10 says, because we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus, we are here created in Christ Jesus. He in it induces us within our spirit with power and enablement, enablement and ability to do great works and great things. And you know what? You and I, though sometimes we look insignificant, incapable, but you and I were made to do great work and break word. Amen? Amen. Now let me share with you an uh, illustration. You know, if you go to North America, there are times late in the night in the harsh desert of North America called Sornoran Desert, where one can hear a faint, high-pitched howl. But you probably wouldn't suspect the source of the sound, the small yet mighty grasshopper mouse howling at the moon to establish its territory. This unique Rodent, dubbed as the werewolf mouse, is also carnivorous. It eats grass and roots, but at the same time, it also eats insects and so on and so forth. In fact, it preys on creatures few dare to mess with, such as the scorpion. But the werewolf mouse is uniquely equipped for the particular battle with the scorpion. It, on, it not only the has a resistance to scorpion venom, but can even convert the toxins into a painkiller. 
and uh, amazing. The Bible says we as Christians, we, we were induced with the Spirit of God, we were given the Spirit of God, we didn't have the enablement to turn every discouragement, every pain, every difficulty, every hard knock that we face in life into a painkiller, into something that will make us feel stronger, make us feel better, make us feel at ease. Though outside the things are not at ease, the things outside are discouraged, are very discouraging, but yet the Spirit of God within us help us to look at things with the right perspective and turn it around and make it into something strong to build us up, strengthen us, and lift us up. Amen? Now, there's something inspiring about the way this resilient, resilient little mouse seems to custom made to survive and even thrive in harsh environment. The same with you and I. You know, as Paul explained in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the kind of marvelous uh, craftsmanship characterized God's design for his people as well is similar to this werewolf mouse in the Sorona desert in North America. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now for each of us, God's handiwork in Jesus uniquely equipped to contribute to His kingdom. When God created us, when God made us, when we got saved, God put His Spirit into us, God's Spirit within you and I have somehow worked in every one of our lives as we yield with Him, a yield to Him, to be empowered, to be trained, to be strengthened, to be built up, so that we can contribute to the work of the kingdom. We can do greater things than can we ever imagine. Amen. So no matter how gifted, how God has gifted you, you have much to offer to the Lord and to the people of God and to the house of Jesus Christ in this world. As you and I learn to embrace with confidence who God has made you and I into and to be, you and I will be a living witness to the hope and the joy of life in Christ Jesus on earth. You know, we don't have to live our life defeated. We don't have to live with a victim mentality. We don't have to live with a mentality to say, oh my, my, oh poor, poor me. We don't have to live with a mentality to say, you know, everybody seems to be against me. Everything seems to be against me. Everything that's happening in the world, I seem to be in the receiving end. I seem to be in a bad stage. I, I seem, everything seems to be negative to me. You know what? You don't have to live with that kind of mentality. Poor me, poor me kind of mentality. Oh my, I am good for nothing. I cannot do anything. Because why? God says, the Word of God says, He has specially made you and I into whom He has installed for you and I to be. But there's someone called the devil. And the Bible calls him the enemy of our souls. Constantly looking for opportunity to entice you and I, to tempt you and I, to cause you and I, and to deceive you and I, to be entrapped in a scheme of lies and deception so that he can somehow move in and control your life and, and lead you to live your life the way he wants you and I to live a failure, a man of pain, and a man that will struggle in this world. That's the enemy of the soul. But you know, that, 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 isn't, that is not what God wants you and I to be. That isn't what God wants you and I to be. So as you face whatever feels most menacing in your own life, most dangerous, most threatening situation in your own life, the Bible tells us, take courage, be strong. Why? You may feel small, but through the gifting and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in you, God can use you to do mighty things. Amen? No matter what you and I face outside, God can use you to do mighty things and do great things in this world if you learn to trust Him. That's why the Bible tells us 1 John 5 verse 5. Who is it that overcomes the world? 
Only the one who believes that Jesus Christ or Jesus is the Son of God. He said, if you believe, if you trust, if you receive Him, if you rely on Him, if you really depend and commit to Him, you know what the Bible said? You can overcome the world as follower, as believer, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. You and I don't have to live with a victim mentality, a failure mentality. You and I can live as a victor. You and I can be an overcomer. You and I can have the strength of the Lord to live on this earth. You and I can excel. Like I always tell our church staff and all our assistant pastors and ministers, they can excel. Every time when they come to the house of God, when they come to the office to do work, they must, they must prepare in their heart to excel. Believe God to use them to do better, greater than what they can do and what they are doing. Amen. We can excel, not because of our own ability. We can excel because the Spirit of God is at work in every one of us and He can do great things in and through our lives. Amen? That's our God. That's our God. Only the one who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the one to overcome the world, who can win the battles of life against the world, who can possibly fight against the enemy and this world and temptation and struggle and pain and pandemic and win this battle except he who has Jesus in their life and believe in him for victory and for success he with us shall have the victory amen amen yeah why why because 1 John 4 verse 4 says but you belong to God. You hear it again, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Who is that? The spirit of the world. Who is that? The devil. Who is that? Demons and, 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 and uh, uh, fallen angel. Who is that? People who are against you. You and I can have victory because Jesus lives in you, have made you and I to be a mighty warrior. Amen? You can be successful in living your lives. So now, listen here. What scriptures say to you and I today? What has the Bible to talk about you and me in order to live uh, a victorious life? You know, live a life, you know, though we are small, we can be mighty in Christ Jesus. We can more, be more than a victor in Christ. Let me share with you a few things. All right, four things. Number one, watch your focus. You want to do great things for God? You want to excel? You want to grow? You want to be better in Christ? Watch your focus. What does it mean? What you focus on, what you look at, what you see is very, very important in your life. Many a times in our life, we only look at negative things. We only look at failures. We only look at bad news. We hear all the bad news and look at all the bad news and therefore we discourage us. Watch your focus. Don't waste your time on bad things and negative things. Patricia King says, Whatever we focus on, we empower. Whatever we focus on, we empower. What does it mean? Focus on the positive, we empower positivity in our lives. If you focus on the negative, the opposite is empowered. If you focus on the failure, if you focus on the pain, if you focus on the pandemic so much, if you focus on the sickness so much, when you focus on the financial situation so much, you know what? You empower that in your life. It will tell you and I, you cannot endure it. It's difficult. It's tough. Focus on the positive. We empower positivity in our lives. Amen. Sometimes, you know, people tend to learn to enjoy the negative things that's happening around the world. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts, fix your focus, fix your mind on what is true, honorable, right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent 
and worthy of praise. You know what it says here? He says, feed your mind. Look, let your eyes look at the good things, the positive things. Let your ear hear good things. People's gossip, people's slander, people's remark. Don't listen to those things. What is happening in the world? Not that we close our eyes towards it. Hey, there are natural things that happen in the world. We need to focus on God. We need to focus on God's Word. Let God's Word be our strength. What you and I focus empowers you with faith, with hope, or empower you with fear and discouragement. Ephesians 4.13 says, I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. How can I be empowered? When I learn to rely on the strength and the grace and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Watch your focus. Many a times, we know, you know, I, I don't understand about people in the world today, whether young or old, they just enjoy passing around, sending around, forwarding around all the negative messages, pictures, and information. Very seldom we pass around good news, but we enjoy all the negative news. No wonder sometimes we are always living in fear and failure and disappointment with a victim mentality and a fearful mentality. Just now we say Ephesians 4, 13, said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Focus on what is right? Watch your focus. Number two, develop godly mindset. Develop godly mindset. Second Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in the weaknesses and in the insults, in the hardships, in the persecutions, in the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For where, when I'm weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, you know what? The world is never getting better. People are getting more evil. Government will fail you and I, but one person will never fail you and I, God. If you are focusing on all these people and you forget about God, develop a godly ma ma mindset. Learn to feed your mind with the Word of God and look at the world and look at your circumstances and my circumstances. Look at the problem that you and I go through and face. Look at the sicknesses and the diseases. Look at the pandemic, look at financial issue through the mind of God. Listen to what the Bible says. It says His grace is sufficient. Don't give up on life. Don't give up in living. Don't give up in what you are doing. The God says that my grace is sufficient for you. When you and I are weak, when we do not know what to do, He said, rely on me, trust in me. In your weakness, He's not saying, so glad that I'm weak. No. He said, we, we, I, now I can get to boast myself. Meaning what? Meaning that if you don't look so much on your weaknesses and you learn to turn to God and look to God and trust in God and believe in God for your circumstances, for your situation, He will come true. But when you look at all the negative, negative, negative things in your life, it will tear you apart. Godly mindset. That's why you say, that's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses. Not that I enjoy weaknesses. He said, in, in some hardship, persecution, trouble that I suffer, he said, you know what? When I'm weak, then I'm strong. When I know I can't survive on my own, when I know that I can't live alone, when I know I can't go the journey alone, when I know I can't go through the valley of, 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 of a darkness, the darkest valley alone, when I go through it, I go with Christ. I'm not alone. He is with me. You know what this mindset? He is with me. His grace is sufficient. His power is sufficient. You know what? This mindset has to develop. I am never alone in my journey. He is with me. Amen? So remember this. God's grace, God's strength is always sufficient for me. 
in whatever I go through, in whatever I face. Amen. Number three, make up your mind. You must decide. You want to be mighty. You want to do great things. You want to be strong. You want to be able to be victorious and not have a menti- victim mentality. Make up your mind. You have to make up your mind. The Bible tells us in Daniel chapter one verse eight. But Daniel made up his mind that he will not defile himself when he was forced to change to to eat what the people in the palace of uh, of of the enemy they they were taken in captivity. The king give them. He said, "No, I will not eat. I will not defile myself." He said, "I will not defile myself. I will not allow the things. I will not allow the influence. I will not allow what people say on the faith this is on this earth discourage me." He made up his mind. Daniel decided and determined that he would not give place in his mind or heart to temptations, to life pressures. To life difficulty, he said, "I will not submit and surrender and yield to problems, problems and insult and pain and pandemic and difficulties." He said, "I have decided, and I determine. I will not succumb and give in to pressures, difficult times, hard." Situation in my life because you know why I still have a good God, I still have a great God, and my God is still on the throne. My God is still in control. I focus on Him. I decided on that. I will not trade my Lord, my belief, my faith, and my hope for anything, because in Him I will trust. Amen. In Him, I will trust. Amen. Number four. See God in your situation. See God in your situation. You know, sometimes when we go through difficult time, we 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 can't see God in our situation. We have to see God in our situation. We have to see God in the pandemic. We have to see God in our struggle. We have to see God in our sicknesses. One Samuel seventeen verses forty forty five to forty seven. David said to the Philistine, "You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. This day, he repeated again, I will give your carcasses." Of the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals, and the world, whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. He said, "This day, this day, when all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord save, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give all of you into My hand." You see, listen for a while. See God in your situation. See God in your circumstances. See God in your day-to-day journey with Him. In this trying world that we're going through, you got it. Did David see the giant in his life? He did. But was he focused on the giant? No. David did not focus on the giant in his life. He was focused on God. He was focused on God. King Saul, all his generals and all the army of Israel, they only see the giant. They saw the giant and they keep on looking at the giant and it put a fear in their life. And they always hear the voice of the giant. It put fears in their life. They saw the giant. They succumb to it. But David. Saw the giant, but he did not focus on the giant. He was focused on God, who is over his life. God is over his life. God is the power behind his life. God is the one who drive him in his life. David did not command on the size, on the strength of Goliath, or the weapons Goliath carried, or the tr- the years of training Goliath has gone through. 
his thoughts and his focus was God. His mind, his heart was looking at God and hoping in God and trusting in God and believing in God. His whole being as a person is God. He said, if you come against me with sword and javelin and whatever training and background you may be, you may be big, you may be, you may be humongous. But you know what? I come against you in the name of the God of Israel. He will fight for me. He will win the battle over you. He will help me to overcome you. He never said, I will overcome. He said, He, He, He. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. You know why we are small, sometimes we look insignificant, but yet we can do great things? Because not of us, because of Jesus that is in us, we can do great things. Let me close with this. What about the God who saved you and I? Said to you about Him. What about the God of, who saved you and I? Say about Himself to you and I as believer. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 29. It said this way, And now we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purpose for them. You saw that? Everything that works out in our life, everything we go, we go through in life, God is aware of, God is still in control, and God has a plan and a purpose for you. It's to build you up, to strengthen you, and to make you a bigger person in Christ Jesus. Amen? 29 says, For God knew His people in a once. He saw He know you and I. And He chose them to become His son, so that he, His son would be the firstborn, the supreme among many brothers living in their life, will empower them, will grant them the ability, will grant them the grace and the strength to be an overcomer, to do great things, to be mighty in the Lord. Verse 30 say, Having chosen them, He called them to Himself. He bring them to empower them, to use them, to, to, uh, to anoint them. And having called them, He gave them right standing with Him. And having given them right standing, He gave them His glory. It means that you share position with Him. You share the power with Him. You share the authority with Him. And then He said this, You know what? Nothing can separate you and I from the love of God. God loved you and I so much that Jesus came and died for you and I. Amen? Verse 31 says, What, what shall we say about such wonderful things as this? If God is for us, who can be against us? You saw that? He said God is with us. Who can be against us? Can the pandemic be against us? No. Can the enemies be against us? No. Can the devil be against us? No. They can frighten us. They can, they can cause a stir of confusion in our mind, in our heart, in our spirit. But they cannot overcome us. The only way they can overcome us is when we live in fear. And when we give in to Him. Verse 32 says, Since He did not spare even His own Son, but gave Him up for us, won't He also give us everything else? You see, He loved us so much that He gave us Jesus Christ. So therefore, don't you think that He will give you all that you need? 33 says, Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for His own? In the people against you, let them be surrendered them to the Lord. No one, for God Himself, has given us right standing with Him. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. He is sitting in a place of honor at God's right hand, pleading, defending you and I. Can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean He no longer loves us if we have trouble and calamity and are persecuted and are hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? He said, you know what? Whatever you and I go through, you and I are not alone. He is with you. He's so close to you that He lives within your heart. 
As the scripture says, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victories is ours through Christ who love us. You know what? He said, don't let the things that's happening, don't let people, don't let the situation and the circumstances around you and I frighten you and I, tear you and I down, dishearten you and I. He said, you know what? In Christ, we have overwhelming victory, overwhelming authority, overwhelming power, and we can be a victor. Amen? Amen? Take note of this. In verse 30, it says, For I am convinced, Paul says, that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God except ourselves. Nothing outside can separate us except ourselves. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above and in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah! Amen! Nothing, nothing can separate you and I from the power and the love of God. Amen! So therefore, don't look at yourself and say, poor me, poor me, poor me. I'm struggling. I cannot overcome. I cannot rise up. Remember one thing. You want to build up yourself in the Lord. You want to be an overcomer. Number one, watch your focus. Things that are good. Amen? Number two, develop a godly mindset. Knowing well who your God is and what He can do for you and I. Number three, make up your mind. Decide not to be polluted, not to hear too much of bad things. Decide not to allow yourself to be disheartened by so many negative things happening in the world today. Number three, number four, see God in your circumstances, in your situation. See God in everything that you and I are going through, that He is with you. One more time, repeat with me. He is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. He is with you. And then you know what? Nothing can separate us. We can be more than a victor. Amen? God is, let me close with this, God is with you always and all the time. Believe Him, trust Him. Amen? You may feel small, but through the gifting and the empowerment and the authority of the Holy Spirit, God can make you more than a conqueror more than a victor. You can have success in your life and prosper in everything you do. Amen? Can you receive that? Can you believe that in your life? That God is with you and no one, nothing can defeat you and I. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Hallelujah. Kura Rabba Shikinda Rama Sunday. Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Amen, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabababa Shikinda Ramas Andai Ramas Andai. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, don't look at the pandemic in the world and allow it to, to weigh on you so much until it suffocates you. Don't allow the difficulty, the struggle, and the pain that you and I are going through to choke you and I. Even though we are small, but yet we can be mighty in the Lord. We can be a victor in the Lord. We can be a conqueror in the Lord. Why? Because Jesus Christ who lives in you is greater, is bigger, is more powerful than He that is outside of you and I, the devil and the world. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Can I challenge you today? Just take a few minutes. Ponder over your own life. Just one minute to ponder your own life. And just say, Lord, you know what? Thank you for your word that you have handpicked me and you have made me to be whom you want me to be, a victor and not a victim, a conqueror and not a defeated foe, a victor, a victor, a victor in Christ Jesus. Amen. Say, Lord, you know what? I need your strength. 
I need to commit myself to you, to trust you, and to rely on you. Can you take this 20 seconds to pray and commit yourself to the Lord? Say, God, help me to walk with you, to believe in you, and continue to trust in you. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray that this morning as we have looked to your word, though sometimes we look at ourselves as small, but yet in the eyes of God, we are mighty. We can do great things because your word tells us in Romans chapter 8 that we are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we pray that you help us to learn to look at things through your eyes. That we will learn to tune ourselves to watch our focus, what we look at and what we allow to come into our life. They will learn to develop a godly mindset that God is still in control. That we will make up our mind to stand for Jesus and to commit to that cause that He is with us and our God is good and is still in control. And that we will see God in our circumstances that He's walking through it with us. And most of all, nothing can separate us from your love. Father, we pray that you protect over us, bless us, as we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe that some of you have not known Jesus yet. Today is a good time to receive Jesus into your heart. If you want to receive Jesus into your heart today, follow me in this prayer to receive Jesus. Amen. Bow your head and close your eyes for a while and follow me right now. Okay? Lord Jesus, today, I want to receive you into my heart to be my God and my personal Savior. Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Help me to walk with you. Commit my life to you and follow you, Jesus all the way this i pray and i ask in jesus name amen amen so when you if you can you go to our facebook and our website and send us a pm to contact us and let us know that you received jesus and that you would like to know jesus more in time to come you know you're most welcome to join us when the church is open for on-site services amen so Therefore, we care for you and we love to meet up with you. Hope you can join us again. Amen. God bless you. Amen.